Alright everybody, hello, my name is Hades And I'm with Ponera and today we're doing the Prodas reproduction If there is one <laughs> Well, we kind of decided that the topics needed to be a little bit more specific Because I don't know if you remember, but Yeah, basically if we just said, let's talk about Prodas It became like a clusterfuck that nothing got decided Nothing was really done And then we, we ran like 40 minutes and then said, well, fuck it So... Um, yeah, so we got to limit it. Yeah, so, okay, we can sort of know a few things right off the bat about how they reproduce. First of all, that they do reproduce. Um, otherwise, I mean, I don't care how long you live. If you're in a war that lasts as long as, like, well, they had their enclave wars or whatever, conclave wars or whatever, and the war with the Zerg, I mean, they would just, assuming each one lived for an indefinite amount of time, Unless you killed them, they would still have like n nobody left. Well, I um, mean, it's we... just a property of life. I mean, the protoss, uh, from well, what I understand, they weren't just there out of the sudden. They had to evolve. I'm guessing. Um, much like the Zerg. The Zerg. Yeah, the Zelnaga did stuff to them. Well, they um, created the Zerg, but they created it from another species. So whatever protoss originated as had to reproduce. Uh, at some, some point. sort of hominin-looking garbage. I don't know. That yeah, of course, it'll be that. two arms, two legs. Oh, wow, the legs have three joints in them. Wow, well, how different from humans. I, I know, strange, hey? Well, technically, the uh, if you look at the, like, just below the knee, uh, their tibia fibula is rather short. And then the part, you know, the backwards knee thing, that's actually the heel. Hmm. So the elongated part just before their little paw thing at the bottom, uh, that's actually the uh, metatarsals. Which is, I mean, that's what birds do, right? So, I mean, it's not that far-fetched. But, I mean, we, we do know that there is two, there's two sexes, right? There's the male and female. So, presumably... Um, Sexual reproduction, have, definitely. Yes, like, that's the reason to have the two different, two different sexes is the swapping of genetic material. The problem is that in all the models... Um, going right back to brood war and everything like that, they don't appear to have, like, a bulge under their cloth or anything like that. Well, um, to be fair, you know, the graphics and whatnot, but you'd look at a naked uh, model, if we can find any. You know, they don't have well, anything they, like that. You get a pretty decent sense for it. Um, actually, you remember the final... Uh, cinematic in brood war where they like or detonated that zelnaga temple or whatever using like, oh yeah I, wasn't it uh Tassadar, right yeah like you can so. see that there's like nothing there it's like a flat panel of skin on a little scanty little pelvis I'm trying to thing. find it right now and it's so, yeah so basically you can see that you know they unless they're like you know scissoring or something you know i i don't know so I, I hypothesize that, like, okay, let's just assume, because it makes sense, that the male has an intermittent organ. Um, uh, explain so to our with... more ignorant viewers so what intermittent means. Is, so basically he's got some sort of a dick, right? That Some okay. way to transfer his gametes to the female. Okay. We got the avatar route and use the hair, because they both have hair, and it oh. seems... Well, it doesn't because look that not... thin, you know. Because that's not the most retarded movie ever made. It's like Pocahontas in space. Let's just pretend that that movie just didn't happen. So I can understand, like, with the females, assuming that they're anything like, like ours, they would have a receptacle for such uh, genetic material. And, you know, if they're truly keeping to the hominid kind of body plan, the tetrapod body plan, you can expect that it would be somewhere kind of in the pelvic region, right? Which makes sense. I mean, if they're laying an egg or they're you know, I don't know what they would do. Maybe internal fertilization. You never really see a pregnant protoss. So I imagine it's some sort of like... Well, to be fair, none of them would be in battle either. So for all we know, they could be. Well, Selendis was, but like there's... Yeah, it's very very few and they traditionally weren't. Like, what um, do we have? Oracle, Selendis, and there was one other. That's it, pretty much it. Uh, uh, no, Mothership, uh, yeah. isn't it? No, no. Yeah, that's the only two, but, pretty much. Mothership's a computer, I thought. Yeah, that's why I, I thought... Mothership was it, but nah, there was just a crystal talking. Which makes so much sense. Um, so they, uh, 
I mean, there's, the way that I, you can go several different ways. You can have the internal, right? So they're basically doing it. Um, or you can have it kind of like a fish or... Yeah, um, just lay an egg and forget about it. Lay, yeah, lay, lay an egg and the guy comes over and blasts on it instead of blasting on your face. And uh, that's how that would be done, right? Um, now, the thing with internal... The difference between the two is... I mean, that's a pretty big leap, but if you're doing internal fertilization and then laying an egg versus internal fertilization and carrying the baby to term, those are two things that are actually fairly fluid in nature. Uh, the group, well, you, the you have to, let, let's uh, look at one thing, at their physiology. They seem to be pretty slender once you remove all the armor and things like that. So having yep. like an internal growth like mammals do, they would require more body mass. It would just take out, like, look how freaking skinny the protos are. I do not imagine... You know, they're maybe yeah. built for that. I would imagine they would need, uh, you know, they have little room in their abdominal region. So, if anything, I think more plausible, especially them being photosynthetic, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, I think it, their physiology would cope better with uh, external, like the eggs, like with the fish. Well, like you, could, you could get something. I mean, they obviously are a group that has very high social structure. And. To me, that suggests that there is some caring for the young. It's not just a lay the egg and forget it. So I would imagine that that's that that there is some level of care provided to the infants, and what that could look like, because as you pointed out, the um, the body cavity in general is just really restrictive. It could be that they they are doing their like amphibian, you know, encrust some eggs on something and blast away, or. Um, well, we're talking biological, not so much, you know, what they do with it. You know, that's well, their that's, mental that's all, choice. That's all part of it. That's all part of it, right? Oh, I have uh, a, actually but... a pretty good model. I'll send it to you. This uh, is actually just protozoate. I'm thinking without anything on it, just the skin and bones. Oh, okay. Well, I'm thinking, here's what, where I'm going with this. Is I think that because they do have that strong male-female role, and because you do have that... Um... Sorry, it's this one. My bad. Go on. Okay, uh, because you have like the strong female male role, and you do have that high level of social development, that you're looking at something where they all, they almost certainly are forming, you know, some kind of a family group. Whether that's and yeah, basically the zealot is just like a tube of muscle, right? So, but he's not the one carrying the baby. But even so, I mean, you could you Still, could you, can't, you don't see much of a difference at first glance between a female and a uh, male of a protoss. What I'm suspecting is that there's probably some form of internal fertilization, uh, but the baby isn't carried to full term. And what that would look like is either an egg, which, I mean, that seems kind of weird because they they do have several mammal-like traits just in their overall metabolism and, and brain size to body size ratios and things like this. So perhaps it's a little bit more like a uh, marsupial where they, like, you know, crap out this little jelly bean-looking baby and then they, you know, incubate it somehow. And I'm imagining because they're so technological, they have like, you know, little incubation chambers and stuff and tend to and actually tend to the baby's needs, which, you know, goes to speaks about their social structure because of the family groups um, and things like that. And sorry if I'm sniffling, I'm, I'm sick right now. So no, it's um, fine. Uh, another thing I noticed about the protest is that it is he has those, uh, I guess, ornaments on his head protruding. And we see that in, uh, I guess, Velociraptors, Peacocks, etc., etc. So in their infant stages when products weren't all high-tech, I guess this could be a used to attract the mate. Uh, those things yeah, it, we, talked about this lot, a long, we talked about this a long time ago, and I don't think raptors in particular had a lot of sexual dimorphism. You're thinking more like the duck-billed dinosaurs would certainly did. Well, um, some animals have like those specific uh, vesti of, I mean, vestigial things. Well, not well, it's not even vestigial. I mean, it looks to me like as they get older, these things get bigger and more elaborate. And yeah, know. hence why, like Artanis has his big ass helmet because he feels like he's less of a man, so he has to compensate. Uh, compensate, yeah. Well, that, that's probably how they, you know, attract the mate, um, and so forth. Um, what I'm thinking, because like you can see, there's really no place for you know a genitalia unless it's just dangling off this this pelvis thing. Um, and you actually do indeed see in the old generation sim or uh, old generation videos that it's just like a piece of cloth just like hangs flat over it. So it's either it's like inside their body and pops out of like a little cloaca, like a you know a lizard, 
Well, or perhaps look the... at the way the back is curved, right? You see yeah. on a picture I sent you on a rightmost image, there's this yeah. blue spot. I would imagine maybe in a female, there could be, like, see the, there's a, this line. You know, how uh, men have this uh, thing. Uh, like, everybody starts as a female, the whole thing. Maybe in females, this could be like an orifice that closes, where a male could be... So, like, for... in the small of the back? That's really weird. Um, well, that's the that only be... place I see. I mean, the pelvis just looks like a giant bone. Yeah, well, that's what it is with humans, too, but we have, we've got several openings down there. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't see any. Really. But I'm, what I'm kind of thinking is maybe the male just fists the female, and <laughs> maybe they've got, like, semi-porous membranes on the palms of their hands or something like this. Well, the two fingers are longer. A lot longer well, than the other ones. It doesn't have finger nail. Oh, and, it does. <laughs> and how often do you actually see them manipulating things with their hands? They use their, you know, their weird psionics. And they also, when they fight, use like side blades and stuff, right? So I, I think, other than uh, it's the Void Ray, he does some clicking and stuff, but he's wearing full body armor, right? So when they do have to use physical interaction, it seems to me like they're covering this up. So maybe what happens is the male just drives a fist into the female, and and she takes either you know like skin cells or they maybe make pluripotent cells. Um, on their hands or something like this. I mean, it's all yeah. Kind I mean, of wild DNA is everywhere. It's not just in sperm, although gametes appear only in a certain place. But there's a well, third option. Are also, the, the gametes are also half the genetic material of a full cell. So right. So why not just take half of the already full cell? But and a third option is, and this is just a bit of a cop out, is that the Puras did have the reason why Puras doesn't have an orifice, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, is because they evolved past it like this is a future on my episode with the brains like uh, we don't have yeah. to crap anymore we don't have to do this anymore maybe the pro uh, did at some point have orifice and things like that but at this point they're so evolved they can just take well, the, a syringe in themselves and just do it in a yeah they're incubator. pretty technologically dependent and they are artificially excuse me they are artificially uh they are an artificial species so well um, they just have grown their origins they no longer need it and i imagine with the shit that's been happening lately, the IRA being fallen down, I don't think any Protoss able to fight would like to take his time out and actually care for a baby. Instead, they would just like, stick the syringe in me, I gotta go fight. Why wouldn't they just use cloning then? Yeah, my point. So, you know, no belly buttons, no nothing. So why even have those features if you have the technology to do that for well, you? Well, the belly button is basically a nod to placentation usually well as so an example that... there's nothing suggesting that pros are capable at all of reproduction no orifices no any dedicated well there is there is stuff though i mean you've got females and males that are serving two different roles in their society traditionally um and even even to some extent you don't see a whole lot of the other females on the battlefield even in the more desperate times so that to me says that okay if if they don't have equal roles what is the role that we're not seeing from the other sex well somebody has to make those buildings that I that are warped in maybe <laughs> well they I, I, I thought always thought that that was like a mechanized process and then they just warp them away but um, I, I, like I'm assuming that you know you don't have one female to every 5,000 males and it's just a big gang activity well, just, and as far I... as the as far as the genetics go, if they're deriving, like, let's say they, you know, do the fisting thing and then they lose, they take a fully developed cell and use that to exchange the gametes, perhaps what happens is the, the division that makes gametes happens after fertilization. Uh, I'm not sure the specifics of how that could work. I mean, you, what, well, what would end up I mean, it's just have... gene separation from uh, the nuclei or things like that. But well, yeah, well, we're how, running how at 30 those... minutes. We're running at 30 minutes. So just to wrap up, uh, I would say... We're, we're not at 30 minutes. It's like 15. That's not what my Skype says. Your Skype... Oh, that's just for the call in general. Oh, we started true. at about 6, and it's 6.15. Oh, okay. Well, it just yeah. means... So, so how, how it could work... And for those who those who don't know... So when you're making a gamete, you start with a two what's called a 2N cell. <laughs> Right, and then you divide and make two. Well, what happens is it doubles first, so it makes a four n, and then it double or halves and then halves again. Uh, I'm 
basically, um, is the simply simple way of, of doing that. And it's been a long time since I looked at that genetic shit, so if I'm wrong, let me know. Well, well um, I guess the simplest way to explain it is just that it's a cell with half a nucleus, or half the genetic no, information. Yeah, half, half the genetic information, yeah. Yeah, and that so, would be more specific. So it it divides before and then joins up to make a whole end, whereas these guys could join up and make that 4N, assuming they're 2N, which we just wildly well, guessing here, they would make a 4N, and then that would divide into two 2Ns, two so they'd always have twins. Hmm. Which wouldn't necessarily be identical, just... and that. I mean, maybe the re that actually brings up a point. Maybe the reason why there are less females is just that uh, a male... Uh, it's There's more likely outcome that... Uh, Fertilized egg will have male uh, characteristics, or well, the way that you can look at it also is what? Okay, and you're gonna laugh at me. What if it's like a similar situation to haplodiploidy, which is what we see in ants of all things? Um, basically, basically how it works is you have to have genetic input from a male in order for the female to make other males, but without, like, without the genetic input. I mean if she's just deriving it from her own genes, she's only able to make females. Um, and this is common for things that can clone themselves and stuff like so that. So the only uh, way she can make a male is if there was an input. <coughs> yeah. An it, or, or let's say their genes are set up in a way where the male is, um, let's say XXY chromosomes, right? Has three chromosomes. Mm -hmm. And the female is XXX, right? Right. Or how do we do this? Basically, like... So you need three sets of chromosomes in a way. I mean, Well, the, the way where I'm going with this, and I'm not sure, uh, I'd have to think about it more, but th th it could be a system where the female can't produce other females unless there's input from a male, but she can make males just based off of her... Like, like let's say she's an XY and the male's an XX, right? Which is the opposite of... Or maybe us. in an opposite way... Uh, because I see females are more slender, they don't get, you know, maybe it's the other way around, maybe it's actually what we think are the protoss males are actually the ones that reproduce and they need an input from a female. So it's just a reverse yeah. for all we know. So, and that will make it yeah, simpler, yeah. they need an input from a female to make a female. Yeah, and that's, make that's, male. Uh, yeah, that's where I was going, right, so if you've got, you know, one, one that's XX and one that's XY, in order to make an XY you need a Y input, right? And that's the same for people, right? Like, let's say that in the future, women can actually reproduce hypothetically using gametes from other women, but they only provide that X chromosome. Right, so because a female doesn't same. have an X chromosome, she, so she or can't. She pass doesn't it have over. a. She, does, she doesn't have a Y, so she can't. Right. So males would go extinct rather rapidly, um, which is a whole other bag of worms. Of, but anyway, um, they, which provides another explanation. So, Maybe that females died off because they were in the battle ready. They couldn't def defend themselves during the original well, IR invasion. I think I think what it is is that because the males are always away doing stuff, you know, contributing to society, the females are more likely to make to not mate, and not get that input to make a female. So they're they're like let's say they're yeah let's it's it's or I maybe it's because most of the I I mean I'm assuming the survivors majority of the survivors of the protest were on uh, weren't on ire, so. Maybe it's just that all majority of the females were on ire during the invasion and they died off, whereas uh, what we see today are just the, the people, well, not people, the protas that were on ships away from ire that were actually spared from the attack. So we got well, all those that's... females that were wiped out during an attack. Well, that seems true for the Templars, but the Dark Templars on Chakuris, as far as I know, I mean, doesn't... You've got uh, Rashigal and all those other females... And then you have right. They had a matriarch, which is a matriarchal society. And they also had a um, like oracles is where that's where oracles and stuff came from, and they're piloted by females. So presumably, yeah, she, they yeah, they, they might fit because you see more females from Shakuras. Uh, yeah, presumably. I mean, we don't really have good population numbers, and it might just be that their culture is different on Shakuras that allows the females to do this kind of behavior and activity. And keep in mind that the females are never really in direct physical like they're never up in the face of a hydralisk getting shot at right they're like in an oracle that you know pops in and runs away yeah this yeah th this makes sense because it's a matriarchal society so if it is led by females then 
you know, you think that the uh, Protoss males that are in battle, the Zealots, they're actually getting the good end of the deal because they're warriors, they're defending their honor, but maybe it's because, you know, they're subordinates to the uh, female leadership. Well, uh, yes, certainly maybe on Shakuris, but you also see the thing where if there is a differential rate of reproduction where you have more males being produced than females, um, and this is a weird result of males being away from Yeah, females, but that's, wh but the, that's why then, they're special, you know, that's why they have a higher yeah. status. And that's, um, well, that, that's not a universal thing, because as far as we know, Rashagal and Selendis were the only two. Uh, yeah, that, I mean, in Brutal we had the, the Conclave, who were the great leaders, and they were all male, from what I understand. Yeah, okay. and that's because they were on they were on Ire, and so I'm suggesting maybe there was a difference in culture, which we know there was. Oh, yeah, definitely. Sort of that's what the whole bullshit, there. let's not fight the Zerg, let's fight the uh, Zerg tool was about. <laughs> Yeah, so, I mean... It's kind of hard to say that there's limited amount of information, but we can just infer, you know, we can speculate all we want, but the best possible scenario I can see is just that they, there was some kind of organ for this uh, protest to evolve, yeah. uh, to reproduce, but now it's long gone and they just use their technology well, because it makes sense. Why would they? We, we don't know that it's gone. It could be that there's a cover, like, that it goes up into the body. Um, that's really common for... Yeah, dogs, let's uh, say. F fish, reptiles, some mammals. Um, I mean, whales have a massive dong, and it's in their body at all times, right? Thank it's you huge. for that info. <laughs> and same with barnacles, right? Barnacles have the large, uh, famous for having the largest penis-to-body size ratio, and it's always inside their body. Um so they can just have this giant, massive, impaling dong that, that comes so out. So for all we know, the Peras might be packing heat, but we won't know because they keep them inside. Well, they're modest, right? <laughs> well, they don't just honor, like walk, they don't, They're not like people. They don't just like walk up and put their, their, their like drive up and say their giant decked out truck. And then you know the guys. Carrier. Like small dick. <laughs> yeah, right. Carrier yeah, pilots. Like, I know, right? Well, yeah, the carrier pilots are the ones with micro, micro phallus, right? Maybe. That's why they're disappearing. Maybe they're selecting for the larger... Yeah, yeah that's larger. why Proras makes such large ships, because, you know... <laughs> the, the, the yeah. guy I, I don't know. I mean, um, I mean, all we really know for sure is that there, because there's two sexes, there's... The reasoning behind that is, biologically speaking, as far as we know, usually it's to, like, exchange gametes. Which means fertilization of some sort of egg and or some sort of you know reproduction in the mode that we're familiar with. Um, some of us more familiar with it than others, of course. Um, yeah, I just thought of another female, uh, Lassar or whatever her name was from Heart of the Swarm, the one that got captured. Oh yeah, yeah, that's that was true. her. She was pretty stupid though. Meaning? Well, she got caught. She got infested by. Well, like she did, was... She couldn't exactly help it. <laughs> she was probably doing something stupid, like... Yeah, we'll just assume she was doing something stupid. I mean, I've never been infested by the Zerg, and I'm not exactly the smartest person on the planet, so... She well, be the best scenario for that would be just to off herself, but she didn't really have time. That's what the, um... The infested marines do, isn't it? Uh... Well, by the time they're infested, they don't have willpower, so they can't really control well, their, their, their own Well, de their death animation when they time out is actually them shoot, putting out their pistol and shooting them in, themselves in the head. Really? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So, um, who knows? But anyway, yeah, now we're at about 20 minutes, give or take, so it's a good time to end it. Um, but it yeah, gets... but just uh, your thoughts on the scenarios, because obviously all we can do is speculate at this point, just scenarios. If I had, if I had to guess, it would be some sort of internal fertilization, um, and then the babies and the are eggs carried... are outside, yeah. No, no, internal, so the, the, the female gets knocked up, and then it's more like a marsupial, where the baby comes out as like a little jelly bean looking sized thing that's not really... It's just good enough to like climb out and then go into like a little pouch or something, or like it still needs to they, be cared course, for. It's not like immediate. Yeah, and and we can tell this that they okay, so we can tell they reproduce because of the different sexes and different body morphology. We definitely know like it's that. sexual reproduction. It's not asexual. Yeah, we, we, it's not yeah, we know it's body. Well, there's the potential that there could be asexual involved in there too, but we know because of the two different 
sex is that yes there is some sort of sexual stuff going on because of their uh the way their society is built it strongly suggests to me that there is probably some sort of um family grouping and caring for young um so i mean they go as far as to like you know to preserve life so much that they'll put a fallen warrior into a friggin' immortal or dragoon or whatever right so obviously it means something to them and that comes from somewhere and i imagine you know that they are taking care of their young well that's more of their society but biologically speaking well biologically yeah. biologically it would have come first and the society would have developed from that behavior yeah and so speak, so, yeah. so that's your take my take uh criticize it if you want i, I think it's way past uh the point where we can evaluate any real reproductive biology because i think it would really make sense for the protesters to just let the machines do it obviously they would care for their young but just let so it incubate they, like, they have like an army of sex robots i prefer the fisting myself <laughs> no i mean like incubators whereas you like you said you could just have the gametes of a male anyway put it in a machine come back two weeks later there's this little marsupial jelly bean then you take <laughs> care of it because yeah, yeah why not make things convenient but then again protests the decide not to warp in gas straight from the assimilator to the nexus and need probes so who knows maybe they just chose not to because it's not traditional well yeah they, they have that issue and sometimes things aren't quite as practical as well um so i mean yeah but those are just the avenues just uh, the possible avenues that could take yeah yeah so uh, i'm okay i vote for the fisting though all right, you go first thing. I go uh, robot in computers. Sex, sex robots. Sex robots. Just call them what they are, man. Fine. Sex. Well, they're not responsible for sex. Just like birthing robots, maybe. <laughs> Birth robots. Like birth robots. That's significantly less fun than sex robots. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> well, no. well, they might have those too, but like I said, okay. hard to tell. Okay. So this has been quite an informative episode. Sorry for. Anybody who doesn't know about the birds and bees, and I had to find out this way. And if, and if I offended you, f*** you. How about that? How about that? Shit just got real on you. <laughs> All right. Stay tuned for the next episode. This has been Hades. And... Uh, I'm Panera. And this has been an enemy of sci-fi. Take care, guys. Peace.